can play around with those settings quite a bit and create something that you really like and that you want to keep. Now, if you do want to keep it, that's the time that you want to start getting into uh, brush presets and brush styles. So what I'm going to do is close this properties window, but my brush is going to stay active. So I still have that really neat custom brush that I've created. If I click on another brush at this point, I'm going to lose all that customization that I did. So at this point, you want to create uh, a brush preset so that you can save it and that you can use it forever. To get started using a brush preset, the first thing that you need to do is make sure that you have your brush preset toolbar uh, visible so that you can interact with it. So right now I have mine on the toolbar right here, but that's only because I put it there recently. So I'm going to go and turn it off and so that it's not there so that this looks like what you're going to see. So for me to bring it on to the screen, I want to go to Windows to Toolbars and then navigate down to Tool Presets. When I do, I get this little lineup of tools. Um, yours will look the same except uh, I just added that yellow one recently. So if I want to add this new brush that I've just been cooking up, first thing I'm going to do is click on this button which says New Tool Preset. So I'm going to click on that and it has, it knows that I'm talking about the brush that I've just been using. So I'm going to call it Grainy and let's see, I can choose between these different colors so that I can recognize which one it is. I'll pick the green one so that I can spot it really quickly. You can assign a shortcut to this and this is tied in with the keyboard shortcut video that you can find as well where you can learn how to do uh, how, how to assign keyboard shortcuts to various functions. Well it turns out now you can sort assign keyboard shortcuts to 10 different brushes. So uh, I'm not going to use a shortcut on it right now but I could if I wanted to. Uh, this checkbox lets you lock this brush to a specific color. Like if I want this brush to always be a black or gray in this case because it's textured, if I always want it to be the same color that I'm using right now, I will check off the color layer, uh, the color checkbox. You can also assign this brush to a specific layer if you want to. It will always brush uh, if you want it to on a particular layer that you're using and basically you'll get a drop-down box of all the different layers that you have if you have more than the two layers that I have right now. You can also choose between a, ve a vector layer and a bitmap layer for this brush to work on. But I'm going to uncheck that because I don't, I don't like locking my brushes to a layer, but there is a good reason to do it. You can also assign it to have a draw behind function which is very useful because I have a whiteout brush or an opaquing brush that I use just for that purpose. And you can also ask it to auto flatten or not auto flatten. So you have all of those choices. And once I click OK, this new tool preset is going to show up in my tool preset bar and I'll be able to use it forever until I delete it myself. So there it is up there. If I click on it, I can see the word grainy when I float over it. If I float over these other ones, I can click on the tool presets that came pre-programmed into the, to the program, which is the rough, and that is a, a blue drawing that actually, uh, you know, is like a non-photo blue type of color. There is clean and brush, which is analogous to something you could use for cleanup. There is Shading Brush, which is a nice brush that is on Draw Behind mode by default. And just like I did with the whiteout, this draws behind your lines, so it, it works really well for shading. And then finally, there's a Revision Brush, where you can click on the revision there. And this particular brush has a layer assignment built into it. So when I used the Revision Brush, it automatically created a new layer called Revision. And that's because it's programmed to do that. I'll show you. Let's go into the details. I'll go into this gear and this is where you can manage presets and you'll be able to see what 
what's going on behind that red revision brush and why it created this. So I'll click on this gear, brings up the tool presets, and now I can navigate to whichever brush I want to. And notice the difference. Under rough, it has the color saving because it's important that it's blue. Same thing with the cleanup brush. You know, we want it to be black and the shading as well. But the shading has the additional checkbox for draw behind, and that is on. But watch what happens when we go to revision. Now the layer choice comes up too. And the layer is called the revision layer. And the draw behind mode is not only off, but it's specifically saying don't draw behind. You know, it's checked off. And that when this is like this, if this layer doesn't exist already and you use the brush, it's going to create that layer for you. Uh, here's one that I created for my own use. It's a chisel tip, a uh, nice purple brush, and I just kind of like the way it looks for sketching. And this is the one that we just created. So I'm just going to press um, OK on that. You do have the opportunity to export these brushes. And in the same way that you can export them, after you or somebody else has exported a set of brushes, you have the opportunity to import them again too. And that's really good if you happen to be sharing your tools with our other artists working on the same project. Um, that's, it's just really great to be able to collaborate on tools with, uh, with team members or just saving them for yourself when you're working on a different computer or just uh, as a backup. Now, just to wrap up the topic of brush presets, uh, this I hope will, will be helpful to kind of differentiate between the brush presets that we've uh, created up here. And these are the ones that they actually save the color, they save the layer position, they save the draw behind information. These presets save tons of information and they are, are always going to be there. They can't uh, you know, they can't accidentally been, be thrown away like uh, I was mentioning that brush. If I had customized it and then hit a different brush, I would be, you know, that all that customization would have been gone. Uh, so now these are, they're permanently set there until I uh, purposely choose to delete them. But to differentiate between them, so the brush presets are the ones that are in this brush preset bar and they work with this kind of control panel that you'll find uh, underneath that gear. The brush settings that you find in the tool properties section are really brush styles and when you use these you can click on your brush, make your change which is a temporary change, pick your color and then later on any changes that you've made after you click away are gone but it's really good for making changes on the fly.